What's up, guys? My name is Aiden McIntyre, and this is the first episode of our YouTube podcast series, and I have a special guest, Dean Jackson. How we doing? Um, it felt right to have Dean be the first guest on the podcast. We have been friends for a long time. I've trained with him. Um, he has been my trainer, and I think that your development in kind of the baseball community has grown pretty substantially, especially on like social media. Um, so I guess, what do you think you are known for right now within the baseball community? Oh gosh, what do I think I'm known for? Um, I would say probably just being the guy that's willing to put his money, his time and his effort where his mouth is. So uh, I'm just like, I want to take this thing as far as it goes, and yeah. I'm not just going to talk about, uh, oh, what could it have been, mm -hmm. or, um, oh, well, this works in theory, yeah. and then spending, well, I don't have to do it, other people do it, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it's like, yeah, I'm coaching other people, I do that mm -hmm. all the time, I absolutely love it, uh, but I'm still there every day in the trenches myself, mm -hmm. uh, going after this. So at least, I guess to answer the question differently, that's what I hope I'm known for, yeah. is just the fact that, like, look, I'm going to go get it, I'm willing to put in the work. Uh, and that's really the, the image that I try and put out. Yeah, and I think that's probably, in my opinion, that and the gorilla shirt is kind of the status. Let's go, baby. Gorilla shirt and the mullet now. Um, so I think people who have like known you and have kind of followed you for a while obviously know you run your own training, mm -hmm. and you also are still a player. So today we'll kind of focus on the fact that I think a lot of people mainly know you for the training side of things, and they find it super interesting. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's the whole, like, it's not only that you're training, but you're doing it. So yeah. like you're the one doing all of these things are kind of like a test subject to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, but also want to focus on you as a player because that is obviously you're still like your goal. Sure. Um, the main so, one. Yeah, that, yeah. Like that is goal number one. <laughs> the training is something that you are super elite at. And I think that that is also what is obviously making you a better player. Sure. And will be the reason that you end up being the best player that you can possibly be. Sure. Um, so a little bit of background. We can roll through high school kind of into that college transition and what that was like for you because obviously I think high school you were pretty good mm -hmm. pretty early and mm -hmm. then went through some injuries and just kind of the high school to college transition I don't think is easy yeah and I think a lot of people maybe will look at you and be like oh it was probably super easy no issues so what, what I guess what was <laughs> yeah like oh he probably had a great high school and college career yeah um so what was that actually like and during your time kind of through college or high school into college? Sure, so high school, um, I was, when I rolled into high school as a freshman, 14 mm -hmm. years old, I was 6'4", 140 pounds. So super tall. I was 5'2 at the time. Yeah. yeah, super tall, super skinny. Uh, I also threw in the 80s as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like I could just throw. I just pick up the ball yeah. and throw. It's just I, I had a lot of athletic abilities, but throwing was by far the best one. So it was pretty clear that like, okay, this kid's probably going to mm -hmm. be something, but nobody really knew what, yeah. right? Um, so because I was so tall and skinny um, and the fact that I knew nothing about actually training yeah. uh, was I had a bunch of shoulder problems, but it was literally just because um, I was so hunched over all the time, had no uh, mobility in my upper back, so that my scaps wrap around my butt, like mm -hmm. the typical posture yeah. of a tall, skinny kid, right? Yeah. Um, so then I kept getting shoulder impingement uh, because of my posture. So yeah. um, I spent most of my freshman, I didn't play at all my freshman year because I was hurt, even though I okay. threw really hard. Yeah. Um, sophomore year, I played JV. Um, and then uh, junior year was on varsity, and then senior year, most of my senior year, I had shoulder impingement again, yeah. so I didn't play again. Um, but yeah, it was always through hard. Um, didn't have the approach that I have now about mm -hmm. trying to go and learn things. So I wasted a lot of time. This is something I see a lot with younger kids, mm -hmm. is they don't realize how much they don't know. They don't realize how much faster they can get better by just talking to people who do know. Yeah. Um, so that took me so long to actually figure that out. But most of my high school career was just me trudging along, getting better strictly because of puberty. Yeah. Your body's Literally just like developing. It. And I think that's like the whole, we've talked about is like, I think especially high school, it's like you want tips or advice. hundred percent. And it's so much different than actually like going and learning and trying to like solve problems. Yep. And I think, cause that was, I mean, you said you threw hard, but like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, what was the VLO kind of like progression wise? Yeah. And before I get into that, that's why I'm so adamant about getting a coach yeah. is because it is the single biggest thing that slowed my development. Yeah. My life today would be drastically different if I just got 
the coach that I wanted to get at that point mm-hmm. in time. Um, but freshman year up to 80, sophomore year up to 85. Um, yeah. That summer um, after my sophomore year up to 90. Uh, and then yeah. my junior year up to like 88. So I okay. tried, mm-hmm. actually lost Velo because I didn't know bit. what I was yeah. doing. Uh, and then senior year up to 92. Okay. Yeah. And so like, and that's, I think that the, everybody wants to know where they kind of fit in poor, like where their age is. It's well, if you're 14, this is good. If you're 15. And I think that Velo is very much something that is like a lot of it's like, it's either there in bunches and you kind of get it as you, again, like just develop. Cause like, I think the whole, like, I didn't hit 90 until my junior year of college, mm-hmm. but the whole, like that was for other reasons. But kind of like for you, I mean, you kind of had a spike, got up to a really good number, which mm-hmm. is like, it would have been easy to be like, oh, this is great. Now I just throw hard. I don't have to like. That's what about. I did. And that's, yeah. That's exactly what I did was, yeah. oh, I'm 16 and I throw 90. This is great. It's just Which seems happen. super tight. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was at the yeah. time. I mean, what was it? No, 2010? Dude, people weren't throwing 2009, 2009 no. 2010. So um, it 90 was, was getting guys drafted out of high school. Like, sure. If you were touching 90. I mean, now it's like, I mean, high school kids, they're 100. 100%. Yeah. Like all so, <laughs> but that's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, and then, obviously, I threw slower because I didn't yeah. do anything. That's yep. how it works. <laughs> yeah. And then high school finishes kind of the whole, like you said, more of a learning experience. And then college-wise, you walked on yeah. at a D1. Uh, and tried to. Tried to. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, Attempted. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll tell the story on that. So, um I had a full, at the time in Arizona, there was this uh, scholarship called the Ames Scholarship. So if you just did well on the standardized test Mm -hmm. for Arizona, um, which like was just not that hard. Like pretty much everybody got a substantial amount of money to go to college. Uh, So I had a full ride to any uh, in-state. So I was like, look, I'm going to stay in-state. I want to go to ASU. Um, and so it was like, look, I'm six, 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 seven, yeah. going 92. I pitched at the, I was the ace at the, the big name high school in Arizona. Yeah. So it was like, this should be a cakewalk, you know? Yeah. It's like, so this should, like, this should make sense. hundred yeah. percent. And I had, at that time had, was started, uh, at 16, I obviously didn't have the work ethic like mm-hmm. I mentioned before, but by the time I was 18, I was like, no, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I'm starting to, to get the train moving in that direction of trying hard. Right. Yeah. And really dedicating my life to it. So I was like, oh, it should be fine. No problem. Um, was like, I'll just walk on, I'll beat everybody out, and then I'll play. Yeah. Uh, and that's just like not how life works. <laughs> so uh, when they put money into other people, yeah. uh, it, if you are the same as a person mm-hmm. that they put money into, yeah. they put money into that guy. So they're going to go with him, not with you. And yeah. also, it, when you go into college, there's like a bunch of years. It's not just freshman, yeah. sophomore, junior, senior. Mm-hmm. There's also like, okay, guys coming in from – like in high school, you don't yeah. have guys transferring in, right? But yeah, you college, don't have a new batch of – you get the same young guys. You get a new batch of like freshmen every year versus mm-hmm. college. You're and getting junior guys, college yeah. guys and guys yeah. bouncing back from here and yeah. like all this different stuff, you know? So um, I didn't really realize that – that wasn't realistic to walk on. So uh, I thought I had a tryout. They actually didn't end up holding tryouts that year. So for ASU, so I I didn't get an opportunity um, at all. So then I walked on uh, from that point to uh, Arizona Christian. So I had no scholarship my first year at Arizona Christian uh, for baseball. Uh, And I literally just walked on that team Mm -hmm. and pitched three innings at an NAIA uh, my freshman year of college. So that transition was difficult. Yeah, the whole like going from being kind of a dude Mm -hmm. in a good program, Mm -hmm. everything looks great. I'm sure also all the feedback you're getting is everyone's kind of telling you, you're really good. This is going to be great. You'll just go to college. You'll shove. Like Mm -hmm. everything's good. And you said that 18 was when it kind of switched for you Mm -hmm. of like, okay, this is actually what I want to do. Which I think is like, I mean, even for me is surprising. Like, I mean training with you like your commitment and everything is just honestly like pretty insane I so that. i kind of assumed that that like to some extent maybe possibly happened younger mm-hmm. but i think that like 18 is pretty consistently like the 18 to 20 you need to figure it out yeah like if you're gonna play baseball at a high level like which is college first and then mm-hmm. beyond 18 to 20 is like that i mean honestly if you figure it out 20 a lot of the time it's too late yeah so like 18 is if if like a high school guy is watching this you kind of got to figure it out by 17, 18 yeah. years. Yeah, and by figure it out, it's just like uh, get the fire under you to mm-hmm. go, what do you want? Yeah. What do you And identify what you want and then find out people who have gone from where you are mm-hmm. to what you want to do yeah. or, who, or help people do that, right? Mm-hmm. And then just correctly identify like what does it take to do that? Yeah. And then when you learn what it takes to do that, then it's like, oh, that's what it's going to require from me. Mm-hmm. And then like, 
make the decision. Yeah. If you're going to go get it, go get it. If that's more than you want to put in, that's okay. Yeah. And just like maybe reevaluate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, the reason why the switch flipped for me was because um, uh, I realized that I was trending down yeah. and everybody around me was trending up. Yeah. It's almost and, that whole like people that you used to be significantly better than are now suddenly mm -hmm. starting to creep up. Yeah. Which is a very common high school thing. It's always the whole like guys who peak super early. It's like by the time that now you're like at 14, yep. if you're the best player, by 18, everybody else is significantly better. Yep. And a lot of guys don't necessarily deal with that well. Yeah. Um, so Arizona Christian, you were there mm -hmm. for all four years. Yes. And I guess like your overall college summary of performance and like experience at Arizona Christian. Oh, dude. Um, well, I didn't pitch my freshman year other, for, other than three innings. Uh, and then my sophomore year, um, the reason I didn't pitch was we had so many seniors. Yeah. Uh, so how they ran that program was like... You guys had like 60 players, right? Oh, an incredible 80? amount of players. Did yeah. you have like a varsity and JV? And a JV ah. team, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the basically they ran it by getting a bunch of bounce back seniors from other places. Um, so there was not a chance. Like I'm playing on the team. There were guys that were 28 years old that were on our team. <laughs> It was like, it's the NAI, dude, it's yeah, Wild West. Yeah, there's like, no rules. There's no rules. No, there are no, rules. No one's safe. <laughs> but not really. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, I'm 18, playing with 28-year-olds. Obviously, I'm not going to play, you know? Yeah. So, which was hard for me. Sophomore year, mm -hmm. uh, I was supposed to be, like, the guy on yeah. the team. Um, but uh, before uh, sophomore year, I ended up tearing my hip labrum. So, Jeez. go at this point, Velo had shot through the roof. I was working my butt off. Mm -hmm. Really, things had really started to. Uh, I'm at the peak of puberty at this point yeah. in my life, and then also body's ready to go. Yeah, and I got some good people around me, learned how to train, mm -hmm. was punching 97. Um, Jesus, yeah. yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> but then after the torn hip labrum, I'm punching 87. So I yeah. tried to push my way through it. I, that was my first like real injury. I was gonna say because you had like impingement yeah, and like the, the minor stuff, stuff that kind of like it fatigues you, but it doesn't. It's not a major... Yeah. You're not going to lose 10 miles. This was a big deal. Yeah. So it's like 94, 97, one outing. Then like 93, 95. Then yeah. like 91, 94. Then like all yeah. the way down to like 82, 83. And then uh. I'm like, okay, I need surgery. So <laughs> yeah. I go and get surgery um, and then come back and it's like, oh, you're going to be great. All the velo will come back, yeah. whatever. And then a uh, year and a half after surgery, I'm touching 87. So it's just like, it's all I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, my sophomore year was me trying to deal with that. And then junior year, the first half was me again, like actually my whole junior year was me just like pitching basically 86 to 89. Yeah. I was a reliever because I couldn't go long enough because my body hurt all the time. Below the tank. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, it was terrible. Um, and then my, basically after my junior year, I was like, okay, uh, I got to get around people who know more. Because the people yeah. that I'm around right now, they're great. They help mm -hmm. me get to a they certain point. They got you point. there. Yeah. yeah. But then it's like, there's got to be more. Yeah. So um, that's when I uh, found some other people, got training in another direction, uh, up to 93 that senior year. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that's when the college career ended, move on to the pro ball. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so a nice... Rocky. I was gonna say a nice, yeah, thing, just a dude. super straight hill climb through yeah, college, yeah, yeah, yeah. like most people experience. <laughs> um, and I think overall, college is usually when you talk to. This is even the whole like talking to a lot of pro guys. There's a lot of different experiences. There's the guys who were their college career was just amazing, mm -hmm. or like maybe they had a bad freshman year and then they hit like 380 and they go to play in the Cape and it's great. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of guys who get into pro ball, like their college careers are not good. Yeah. And so even for, like, college guys who are maybe struggling, it's that whole, like, yeah, I knew it for me, like, it was, like, my numbers and stuff in college were not good. Mm -hmm. like, technically, my junior was better than my senior statistically, and I threw, like, 87, 88. Yeah. But the whole, like, there are still routes. It's, like, you have to have good stuff, though. Yeah. And so for you, obviously, draft is mm -hmm. what you were going for. Yep. And your draft didn't happen. Uh, so, yeah, so... Uh, and that was still, draft was 40 rounds. You had filled out questionnaires. For all 30 teams. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, didn't get selected in the draft. Uh, did get a call from the D-backs in like the 35th round. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, the coach, the guy that signed me with the D-backs, uh -huh. the guy that called me, um, was the head coach at Arizona Christian when I bounced there from okay. Arizona State my freshman year. Mm -hmm. Um so he called me and he's like, hey, uh, you want to play pro ball? 
And I'm like, heck yeah. yeah like, we're 35 rounds deep. Yep. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Just waiting. <laughs> yeah, which, which I thought was a stupid question at the it, time. It, yeah. And now that I'm older, it's like, that's the best question. Yeah. Do you want to play pro ball? Because that's, yeah. it's probably not the question you should be asking. But I think a it's lot of people. It's tough in that moment, probably. They don't realize that, like, when they're asking the question, do you want to play pro ball? What they're asking is, is this the most important thing yeah. in your entire life? Yeah. And most guys are like, yeah. And it's not no. at all. So it's like the question I've realized as I've gotten older, that question's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a lot for guys to realize that like, oh, I don't actually want it of what it will take to go into yeah. opposite things. But, or even the whole like, you think that it will just take what it took in college. Sure. And realistically, Which is it's you just, just showing up and someone else telling yeah. you what to do and yeah. then, oh, it's all well, nice. Well, if you're a starter already. too in college, like we talked about it a lot, like, with, like in the bullpen, because mm -hmm. a lot of us were starters and then we went to relievers. And a lot of it was like college. Yeah, you felt amazing. Mm -hmm. You pitched once a week. Mm -hmm. You had your entire week set up. Like you should feel fantastic. Yep. Then you get into pro ball and it's like that. Yep. And it's like, oh, now we're on a five-day schedule. If you're a starter, if you're a reliever, suddenly like you're throwing three to four times a week. Yep. And you're throwing in like a tie ball game in the 13th inning. You're throwing in a 12 nothing blowout. Like it, there's nothing consistent or like comfortable about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's definitely like the whole, like, there's a deeper purpose to the question of, like, do you actually want to play pro ball? 100%. Yeah, so they call me somewhere in the mid-30s, um, and uh, he's like, all right, we're going to take you the next couple rounds. I'm like, yeah. cool. Uh, it didn't take me. Yeah. And then draft ends. I'm sad. It's disappointing, right? Because you it's think you're going yeah, you yeah. you're, you're to get drafted, and yeah. you don't. Uh, and then uh, I get a call from Doyle Wilson, the scout with mm -hmm. D-backs. And he goes, you got your bags packed? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, you guys didn't draft me, you know? And he's like, oh, do you not want to play? And I'm like, no, I want to play. Where are we going <laughs> yeah, with What this? is the you question? Know? And he's like, oh, we're going to take you as a free agent. Like, um, you want to play? And I'm like, heck yeah, dude, let's go. Yeah. So it very quickly turned from, like, disappointment Worst to, Worst like, day ever. Here we go, yeah. <laughs> you know? And then uh, he's like, all right, be by your phone tomorrow morning. Um, you probably will have a flight out. So, like, no time, no, no like, uh, you will probably have a flight out. Not, like, definitely yeah. have it. So, I'm just like, okay, They're like, hey, great. just, like, your whole life is in the balance. We just want you to be very calm, have the bag ready to go. Yeah. We may or may not call you in the morning. Don't worry about it. 100%. You'll probably get a call at some point. Yeah, 100%. Like, uh. So, then, uh, that was great. Fun experience. Uh, but, yeah, that's how the, the whole draft ended up working out for me. Yeah, which is, the draft is uh, such a weird thing, even now, how it switched from 40 rounds to 20 rounds. Which is, I mean, I wouldn't have gone drafted. I was a 22nd rounder. I and either, honestly, obviously. if there's 20 rounds of a draft too, it changes like the whole dynamic. Mm -hmm. It changes your drafting different ages now. Your draft, like, and then so even that, like for me, it's like there's a ton of guys who have made the big leagues who were after the 20th round who now probably don't even get a shot. Well, they, it's just going to be harder now. Yeah. yeah. And, and then so like now it's like your best route is to go indie ball and then try and like mm -hmm. work your way back in. Yep. Um, yeah. And then you had your time with the D-backs yep. was you were with them for about a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. So uh, got in with the D-backs. Uh, I'm basically just like, look, man, it's sink or swim. Yeah. So all these guys are coming in there thinking they're a big deal. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, I had some good people around me at the time also that made sure that I understood that like, no, you are nothing. Yeah. You yeah. are the last person. This is a ticket. 100%. This, yeah. this, is, this is like, you will get put in the worst situations possible. Yeah. And it's up to you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not going to be fair. No. Don't, if you expect it to be fair, you're done. Yeah. Um, so basically when the first game, when we're losing 10 to nothing, I'm just like, I'm clearly I'm going in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm clearly going in. And mm -hmm. then it's like, I forget the exact situation, but dude's getting roughed up. Uh, and then it's just like Jackson and I'm ready. Yeah. I'm just like, you know, I'm like, of course it's me. hundred yeah. percent. Of course it's me. Um, but yeah, uh, because I knew the situation I was going mm -hmm. into, um, because I was mentally prepared for all those different things. I mean, I didn't give up a run for my first 14 innings of pro ball. Yep. So it's like, we're talking, we're talking a month yeah. of like just no runs. Yeah. Uh, it's like 20 punches, like one or two walks, Jeez. like no runs. Yeah. Just throwing um, a lot of just yeah, because hammer curveballs, like, heaters up. Yeah, because yeah. it's just like, look, and that was the time when everybody throws fastballs down and yep. away. That was hammer, everybody yeah. throws You can't get 70. hurt down there. Yeah, you like, can't oh. get hurt down there. You throw vast majority fastballs. And I'm just like, look, I throw 91. I got a bunch of vertical lift, which nobody knew at the nobody time. Knew. I got yeah. a bang or breaking ball. I'm going to throw heaters up. Oh, oh, I'm going to yep. throw breaking balls at the bottom. And you're going to have to guess whether they're strikes or not. Yeah. Um, and that worked great. Yeah. That, that strategy worked great. Um, and uh, so I ended up making the all-star team uh, that first year. 
uh, and ended up finishing out the year a little bit cooler than when I started, mm -hmm. but still had a great year yeah. and had a sub three through like uh, mid thirties innings, punched like mid forties guys. Yeah. And first I'm, time in the bullpen. Yeah. First like, time in the pen. Adjustment well, I had done it. in the college. Yeah. I had done a little bit of the pen in college. But like first full season of being a bullpen guy. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, but I, I can't stress enough that uh, I see so many guys go into pro ball and they lose because they think more of themselves than they actually are. I actually had yeah. a lot of people, my stepdad actually, um, was like, no, you're looking at this wrong. You gotta look at it like you're so privileged. Uh, yeah. You're uh, like, and his perspective makes sense. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, you're one of the best players on the planet. Like you've, yeah, you've the whole, worked like you're the so 1%. hard. Yeah. Now you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And my There's perspective, no 100%, that was my perspective, yeah. was just like, no man, if I, if I sink, I'm out. Yeah. There is no, and the only reason I knew that was because the people around me at the time yeah. had put those thoughts in my head. If I tried to uh, lone gun it and do by myself, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. And my season probably ends up much differently. You're going you, blind. 100%. Yeah. Oh, well, they'll be fair. They'll develop it's fun. me. They'll do yeah, this. We, it's you, fun. Whole, like, it's we a made game. It. Yeah. yeah. Your life doesn't have to be baseball. All these things that they tell you in pro ball, but it's like, um, I needed that perspective and that that perspective of like, no, I'm a nobody and I'm going to go and punch out the best people. Yep. Like I remember specifically facing, um, I faced the Reds uh, our first outing and I faced like Taylor Trammell, mm -hmm. Nick Senzel, they had another guy like back to back yep. to back. It's like $10 million in signing. Bonus. And that's how you, but that's how you make it if you're not. Yeah. Guys, and it's yeah. like, bro, they pay me 2,500 bucks yeah. and I'm, I just faced $10 million in signing bonuses and go punchy, punchy, punchy. Yep. And it's like, because the only reason they're significantly better than me at the time. Mm -hmm. The only reason is because I had the mindset of like, no, we're fighting to the death yeah. right here, right it meant now. meant more. 100%. Yeah. And they were like, oh, I'm getting in. I got time. I'm adjusting. 100%. Yeah, yeah we're just in rookie ball. It's not a big Coach deal. Coach is trying to work on like a new swing adjustment. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So um, that mindset helped me a gigantic amount. Yeah. Uh, and that really solidified into like, oh, if I just keep doing that, I can learn this skill and keep getting better and better and better from the mindset perspective. Yeah. Uh, and that's when things really started to become the type of person that I am today is mm -hmm. realizing how valuable that skill was. Yeah. That was like the next progression for you. Yes. So you kind of had the 18 wise. and then you had that one. Yes. And that was, I, I think a funny one was my, uh, when I got drafted, my summer ball coach told me he called me, congratulated me, and then he pretty much said, he goes, just so you know, you'll never be the best player on your team ever again. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then I played, and I was like, yeah, that was right. Sure. So I think that that transition from college to pro ball is different for everybody, but the more you can look at it as, this is your one opportunity, and you need to do your best, and honestly, that's the whole, like, even, we'll probably talk about the whole, like, coaches and stuff like that, but, like, your job is to compete at what you do best so that you have the best chance of being successful. Yeah. So that was the pro ball experience, and then this is kind of where that next shift went into a series of pretty much injuries. Yeah. And so yeah. you had the one major injury before, yep. but then this is where it kind of went through more, there's, which is, I feel like, where you ended up becoming kind of who you are now mm -hmm. was because you went through all of, like, Pretty shitty times. 100%. Yeah. And uh, it's really one injury. So what ended up happening was I had a great first season, right, in, in Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, but my average fastball was like 90.9. Yeah. And you're, like you're carrying it. Yeah. And so you're getting the misses. 100%. And, yeah. and the breaking ball was like, it was funny yeah. because when you pitch in Pro Bowl, you can see who the scouts are, right? Like who the pro scouts you know, are from yeah. other teams. Uh, so I'd throw a heater and they like wouldn't care. Yeah. I'd throw one breaking ball and I'd see all of them simultaneously. Yeah grab their clipboards like, and start writing something down. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, I know. There's a reason why, like, there's a reason why I'm here, you know, because I throw 91. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I knew, okay, breaking ball's good. Mm -hmm. I throw plenty of strikes. I punch people out at a high rate. But what I don't do is throw hard enough. Yeah. Uh, so I went immediately into that offseason like, look, I'm going to throw harder. Let's mm -hmm. go get it. Uh, at the time, I mean, we're talking, what are we now, 2016? We didn't yeah. know anywhere no. near what we know there, about And there wasn't now. facilities. There was like gyms you could go sure, to. But, but there nobody... wasn't like actual facilities, which is crazy now to think about. Like, I think that the biggest thing that's changed literally just in the last eight years 
is the amount of access that everybody has oh, to yeah. understanding everything. Oh yeah. Like 100%. when I was in high school, I remember like looking up YouTube videos. There was no YouTube nothing. baseball video. Yeah, absolutely nothing. And that's obviously kind of like why you got into content, which is a different thing. Sure. But like the understanding of what we had access to was entirely different. Yeah. So we didn't know. I no. I had a problem I needed to solve. I do not throw hard enough. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have this nice easy path to like, well, how do you make a 24 year old throw harder? Like, yeah. Okay. So um, we end up doing things wrong. Uh, I end up basically what happened was I rushed an on ramp. So I took okay. two weeks off after the pro season. Mm -hmm. um, and then rushed an on ramp, which for me, that was four weeks back into throwing. And then Pushed that, it. yeah, on that fifth week, uh, pulled down 103 or whatever oh, yeah weeks, i was yeah. running hot dude Jesus. yeah because i was like i was like all right we're good to go let's go <laughs> get it um and made too big of a jump the hardest yeah. i had thrown up to that point was like 93 uh so made yeah. a 10 mile an hour jump and then decided to do a full spread pull down not a what was that 11 to three that was uh no that was three throws with the five Three throws with the seven, three with the six, three with the five, three with the four, three with the three. That's a so, lot of feeling. Yeah. So my, <laughs> the second time around on the five, yeah, elbow went. It's like, and it's like, oh, okay. Uh, um, Instantly knew it. Oh, on that yeah. throw, uh, but I didn't know I tore my UCL. You just uh, knew something like it, like kept popped. extending. It kept going. Ah. It, like didn't stop. Yeah. Um. So, yep, that was the initial injury. Okay. And then, yeah, I've spent seven years now trying to solve that injury. So, yeah. uh, it was it was weird. We won't get too much into it because <laughs> the, the technical stuff just isn't yeah. exciting <laughs> or well, yeah. interesting. I mean, it's interesting, but it's mm -hmm. very technical. So it's like. Um, the injury was hard to solve. Yeah, the UCL was like a little bit uh, bad, but like, was it really? Yeah. All these conversations going on. So, and then uh, a UCL repair surgery that I had uh, didn't actually end up fixing the problem. And yeah. uh, who knows? Was it a mess up in the rehab? Was it a mess up mm -hmm. in the surgery? Like nobody knows. It's all, but it doesn't matter. Like at the end of it, it's like it just didn't work. Yeah, it just didn't work. So, yeah. uh, but then that the reason we did a UCL surgery. So that mm. kept us off the UCL for the next like four years. Cause yeah. we're like, Oh, that's fixed. That's it's fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Until we was do the everything else problem. that yeah. it was like, Oh, we, the UCL might be mm. the problem. And then we do Tommy John. Yeah. And then that's where we are now. And that's, yeah. that was the problem. And that's um, where like, I think you're like the injury stuff is something that I think you've talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, you're also like very open about it. Oh yeah. And it's not in like, I think that's like, it made you a better trainer too. Like uh, without by, by like an insane amount versus like, I think a lot of people, it's a whole, well, if you get injured, then it's like, oh, well you did something wrong. So mm -hmm. you almost like shy away from it Yeah. versus like, you've just leaned into it and you're like, well, this is how you start to solve problems. Cause also realistically, if you're going to be a pitcher, you're probably going to get hurt. Yes. No, I don't, I can't say that will. I know anybody who's a pitcher who has been like entirely healthy. Yeah. And I was that for a pretty long time. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is going pretty well. Yep. I'm different. And it's like, no, you're, yep. it's, it's like everything catches up. Yep. So I think that your like injury experience, like you said, it's been seven years since the first surgery. Yes. And you've been pretty much injured throughout the whole time. You've had mm -hmm. different like on ramps, you've hit up to 95. Yep. And so that was like, I mean, the up, whole, to seven. up to seven yeah. and then like all the way back down. Yep. And so that's where I think like, we don't even need to dive into every single surgery, no, but good. the yeah. overall five of consensus, them. Just know I had yeah, five there's five surgeries. surgeries. Yeah. And so anytime like we can be like, oh, seven years later mm -hmm. and the fact that you're still playing baseball yep. and you're significantly better in your understanding. And this is the whole like kind of gets us into, I want to talk about your training mm -hmm. because you obviously went to driveline, was a trainer there for a long time, did yep. a lot of different roles, learned a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing your own thing. And I think that the reason it's also, it's successful is because of your own experience yeah. through learning all these things. Yes. And I think players can clearly see that because I think sometimes when players are looking for help, they want somebody who's obviously done it mm -hmm. and kind of understands the problems. But for you, you understand the injury side of it and also like the actual training side of it. Yeah, yeah. So my favorite uh, role started off as a trainer at Driveline mm -hmm. and then, uh, like you said, worked a bunch of roles. Yeah. My favorite one was the director of special projects <laughs> on the pitching side. So literally my job was find problems and solve them. Fix them, yeah. Yeah, literally that's it. So it's like, I'm diving into motion capture data from these guys trying to solve this specific problem with like, okay, how does the kinetic chain work? Like, how does this work? Uh, what does force plate data mean in pitching? Like, uh, oh, this very specific intricate problem, how do we solve, like, yeah. that was my job, you yeah. know? Um, and uh, I can confidently say that my baseball career, my playing mm -hmm. career, yeah. will go further because mm -hmm. of the last seven years yeah. of injuries, I will be better 
at my peak mm -hmm. and I will play for longer yeah. uh, because of the injuries. And that and that's not just, oh, yeah, you were hurt for seven years. Like, of course, you played for you longer. You had a lot of time. seven yeah. years there. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. My career as a player, mm -hmm. take the seven years out. My career will be longer yeah. and at a higher level because of those seven years, because of the things that I learned. And I think that's something that people... Uh, miss. I think most people mm -hmm. miss that. They think, oh, it's this big setback, um, which yeah. it was. But that setback, you then have an opportunity. You're mm -hmm. faced with a problem and you have two choices. Uh, yeah. And you can bitch about it and let it demolish you because look, it is unfair. It sucks. It it's, sucks it's, yeah. And it's unfair. And it's like, did I, did what I did, was it so bad that I should be banned from baseball forever because of my own yeah, injuries? Like, I can't, yeah. It's like, no. P plenty of people have done way worse than that. Yeah. But that doesn't matter because that's what happened mm -hmm. and I can bitch about it and let it destroy me or I can view it as step one. Yeah. And it took me a long time. Uh, it took me a couple years to realize like, okay, if I'm going to make this happen, mm -hmm. the knowledge that is necessary for me to become the type of player that makes it through this thing, that knowledge doesn't exist. Yeah. So I can either cry that no one's done it. Or I can dedicate my life to going to be the it. person who did it. And yeah. now the question is become, which we talked about this mm -hmm. before. The question then is, okay, now I understand what is necessary and what's required for me to go mm -hmm. get my goal. Yeah. How bad do I want it? Yeah. And the answer is really bad. Yeah. It's like, okay, are you willing to go become a world expert in throwing, yeah. pitching training, <laughs> like return to throw? Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. It's like, okay, go. Well, okay. it's all like your level of. I think curiosity actually matched with like a the like actual passion to like go figure it out because yep. I think a lot of people it's all like they want to solve problems but you're either not looking at it the right way or you actually don't want to solve the problem bad enough to go figure it out. 100%. And then you want somebody else to figure it out for you and a lot of your problems there was nobody else who had figured it out. No one had figured Especially it out. Especially within baseball. Like you yes. went outside of baseball, you went Yep. Everywhere, pretty Everywhere. much, to figure yeah. out all these different issues. Hundred percent, yeah. And it's not just a problem; it's it's all these different problems. Yeah. So, uh, a great example is when we finally figured out the problem with my UCL and mm -hmm. realized it was a UCL problem. Was the surgeon that I was talking to at the time was like, "Oh, this specific thing happens all the time in ACLs because yeah. he does ACLs as well." He's like, "Let's test you for this," and that's how we ended up figuring it out. Yeah. Was because it was actually across. The only way we would have solved that problem is by having somebody who knew stuff mm -hmm. outside of baseball. Um, and there were a lot of things, like we've done a bunch of work, uh, obviously, on yeah. the reliever throwing programs that yeah. no one had ever done before. Yeah. So we had problems that we wanted to solve, which was like, okay, um, I want to train to be the best reliever I can possibly be. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to that question by building layers of work no one had ever done before already, yeah. right? Um and then we do more work that no one had ever done before to solve the problems that we need to solve mm -hmm. to go and accomplish the things that we want. It's like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't go home and like, oh, I've had a long day. It was day. a good day of throwing. Let me yeah. relax yeah. and let me like do this or that. Like I go home and I'm like, I have problems that I want to solve. Yeah. And I solve those problems. Yeah. And it's and like. that's why, But that's why I'm also the whole like, in my opinion, you're the best throwing trainer that I have any experience or ever that. known. And I think a lot of guys feel a very similar way. But that's because you go out and you figure out the problems other people aren't like willing to solve. Yeah, and the, and the sole purpose, or, or excuse me, the sole reason is because I actually care that much. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. I understand yeah, that no, it's it insane is. that it I is. care that much. But somebody, I get it's it. the whole like, but to do what you're doing, you have to. 100%. You're the best, in my opinion, in the training side of it, and I think a lot of other people agree. And people who haven't met you, people who see your content, and this is even the cool thing, which we probably won't even get too much into, is like your content, the reason you started posting content was very similar to me, of uh, there wasn't content. Mm -hmm. There wasn't like you start posting slow motion videos of mechanics because yep. there literally wasn't videos of there. mechanics. Yep, yep. And so I think that the whole like you also chose though to not like gatekeep what you learned. Yeah. Because to some extent, like you are still a player. Your yes. goal is to be a player. Yeah. So technically it's like, well, you could have just learned all these things, solved them all yourself, and just done it yourself. Yeah. And you chose not to do that, which is something like I'm super grateful for. And I know that it's a, impacted a lot more players positively than if you would have just like done it yourself and kind of not brought that out, um, which I don't think is probably something that maybe people recognize enough mm. that you did. Because I think people are just like, oh, well, yeah, Dean just fixes problems and he figures them out and then he can help us do it. But like you didn't have to. Yeah. And I so I that. think that that's like a testament to the training side of it. But the portion of it that I think I'm excited about is your playing. Mm -hmm. and your goals as a player. Yeah. Um, and I think that, again, people know you kind of on the training, content side of it, but like 
in my opinion, like you're going to be a professional pitcher. Yeah. And you're going to do it at an insanely high level. Yep. Like the whole like the 100 mile an hour thing to me is like, well, yeah. Yeah. Like that's just yeah, like. Yeah. Well, the only reason yeah. the number is 100 is because that's what people. Uh, that's what people wouldn't look at me like I'm crazy for yeah. saying. Is like, oh, you think you'll throw a hundred? Like that's a crazy yeah. number. Like um, this will sound insane. I genuinely, in my head, think I can throw 106 uh, because. Uh, oh, I love that. Yeah. But it's like it's just it's just okay. Is that realistic or not? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Because yeah. I'm so biased, because mm -hmm. I'm in my own head, yeah. that like I can't look at that objectively. That's probably so ridiculous. But you've also, but like people have thrown 105. Sure, what, is and, it, I, and I know how they did it. Yeah. And it's like I've spent my whole life figuring yeah. out how does it work, how do you build those adaptations, what does it take to build those adaptations, all is it like mm -hmm. all of it. How yeah. does the energy transfer the body? Like all of it. I got it. I understand it. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I'm learning more. This. I'm not to say that I know everything, but I understand how those guys accomplish what they accomplished. Yeah. So it's like. Um, the blueprint is there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's okay if I can't do it. I, yeah, I think but it'd be, better, of... it'd be better the whole, like, I mean, I, obviously, this would be a great clip, but the whole, like, 106, yeah, it is insane. Yeah. But it's also, like, you say 106 to me, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, if anybody yeah. I know is going to do it, yeah, you're, you'd be the person to do it. 100%. And, and that's even like... where, like, the 100 in my mind is, like, well, yeah, if you're healthy, you'll hit 100. Yeah. Like, I don't have any doubt about that. Oh, yeah. Like, I just watched you throw 95. And it literally took like a little turn of the key of like, ah, we're at 92, just do that. And it was like 95. Yeah. And that's the whole like, and you, like you said, whether you know if you can do it or not, doesn't really matter because yeah. you'll figure out whatever it is that would be the, stopping yeah. you from doing it. 100%. And even if I can't ever do it, that's okay. Because in my head, that's what it takes to be the best that I can possibly be yeah. is the full commitment towards being potentially mm -hmm. the best in the world. Yeah. I, I want to go and get everything that I can possibly get in terms of playing ability mm -hmm. and take myself all the way to the max of what I am physically capable yeah. of. Now, I think it's really popular to say that, but I don't think a lot of people actually believe that or no. are willing to do the work. Great example, literally spent $60,000 of my money on a motion capture lab. That's my money yeah. that I made. And then they're like, oh, Dean, well, uh, of course, like because you have the $60,000. And it's like, no, 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 <laughs> let's take a step back here. Like yeah. The reason I have that money is a couple reasons. One, uh, my girlfriend and I live in a two-bedroom apartment yeah. with two other people to make mm -hmm. our rent as low as possible because yeah. she's building her own business as well. Two, we share a car. Yeah. Three, I make the vast majority of my meals on my own. Yep. Four, Every single day for the past basically 10 years, yeah. uh, I have continued getting better and better and better and better mm -hmm. at the things that I do, which then allow me to make more and more and more and more money. Yeah. And look, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult. No, Dean, three years ago, did not have the ability to spend that much money on yeah. a motion capture lab. But it's like... But Dean, three years ago, was still doing everything that you needed that to do That we needed to do to time. eventually get it, 100%. Yeah. So like, literally, my girlfriend and I sat down and had a conversation. Do we want to buy a house? Mm -hmm. Or can I buy this motion capture lab? Yeah. And she said, go get the motion capture lab. It's yeah. like, that's what it takes. So when, yeah. when I sit here and I talk about me becoming the best that I can possibly be, I'm actively sacrificing things in yeah. my life in all other areas mm -hmm. to go and get the things that I think are necessary to become as good as I can possibly be. This is yeah. the purpose for my life. So when I sit there and I say, I want to be as good as I can be, yeah. I mean it. I yeah. mean every ounce of my saying it. I put my effort there. I put my time there. I put my focus there. All of it, that's where it goes. Yeah. So it's just like um, all of that to explain, like, if I don't get 106, am I going to be crushed? No, it's totally fine because <laughs> it's, it's going to be yeah, – it's, it's, it's also, ridiculous. It's an, yeah. yeah, It's whatever number it ends up being, awesome. But yeah. it's like I'm the when I say that, I'm – Fully, it's communicating that I'm mm -hmm. fully committed to being as good as I can possibly be. Yeah. And whatever it takes to do that, I will do it. And it's yeah. not it's not a, oh, whatever in front of the boys. Yeah. And then like you're playing video games till 2 a.m. Or you're doing this. Yeah. No, dude, literally all of my waking all hours. Of yeah. All of them. There's not, it's not like a, oh, and then I go home and do it. All of them yeah. are spent towards this thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's just the reality that I live. And it's awesome. And I love every second of it. Uh, and I'm sure at some point in my life, I'll have more balance. <laughs> and uh, we'll be hanging out in Hawaii, I'm sure, in 25 years from now, joking about how crazy we were when we were kids. <laughs> um, but yeah. that, that, that's but what it I want to do it's your, it's your priority. That's, yeah. It's the number one thing. Yep. And that's the whole like... I think obviously as somebody like who recently retired, it's the difference of like, 
it's very clear. You need to, it needs to be like so clearly like this is your priority mm-hmm. and this is like what you need to do. And for you, like it's all like that hasn't changed. And like, that's why it's still the priority. Yep. And I think that that's where a lot of guys struggle with towards the end of it is like, either they didn't feel like they gave everything they had mm-hmm. and there's like that little bit of doubt or they can't come to the grips with the fact that like, it's not your priority anymore. Mm-hmm. Because if it was your priority, that's the only thing you would be doing. Yeah. That's the only thing you would think about every time you wake up. It's the same, like, it's the whole, like, when I was training with you for the pro day, it was, I listened to the same song on the drive every single day mm-hmm. for seven months. That was the song I got released to. Yeah. And, like, but, like, it was easy. It was every single day. Yep. And so I think that, like, the whole, I think the other reason that people on social media, there's a ton of baseball now content, way more than there was before. Yeah. But I think the reason that people whether they like you or admire, it's all kind of the same thing is because they actually believe you yeah. and they actually see it. And it's like, Oh, well, this guy's actually doing it every single day. Sure. And that's the whole, like the understanding of what it actually takes is so much more than people think it is. Oh yeah. Like if you want to be the best baseball player you can be, whatever you're getting right now is not close to enough. Yeah. It's not even for close. almost everybody. It's not, yeah. Literally. I think, I think that's the reality that I came to a while ago was Every single person can continue to get better. Yeah. And there are lots of different ways that mm-hmm. you can get better. A lot of, it looks a lot of different ways. But yeah. I think a lot of people think of it as, oh, I just go through life. And when I hit my peak, that's as good as I could have gotten. Yeah. And the reality is you are not even close to how good yeah. you could have gotten. And to me, I became obsessed with the idea of like, well, how good can I be? And every time I ask that question, yeah. I'm willing to put in a little more. Mm-hmm. So maybe at the very beginning, when I was six, 16 year old Dean wouldn't do this. No. 14 year old Dean wouldn't do this. Well, but you also He'd don't have a, a comprehension. Bro, so absolutely like, not. This is like when high school kids is like, oh, should they train like big leaguers? It's like, I mean, I don't think they can. No. I don't, don't think it's healthy. No, they, at don't all. Have, they don't have the ability. No, you can't. This, this 15, 16 year old Dean gave like a 0.1 out yeah. of 10. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, well, now these other people are catching up to you. Yeah. Do you want to do something about that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I do. I'll do something about that. But I won't try too hard. Yeah. I'll just do a little bit more. So then it's like a 0.5 out of 10, maybe a 1 out of 10, right? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, some time goes on. Now you're getting worse compared to these other people who are getting better. Now you're 17. You're throwing slower than you did at 16. Yeah. Do you care about that? It's like, yeah, I do. And then it's like, you add, okay, yeah. well, I'm willing to give up more than I gave last time. Now it's like a 2 out of 10, right? Yeah. And that's like you keep doing that. And then it gets to the point where it's like, no, I'm willing to put my entire life, everything I have, mm-hmm. the people all in my life understand what's up. Like yeah. you guys. The surrounding yourself with people who like get 100%. it. hundred percent. You this say 106. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Well, but this, is such a, this is such a great example. Uh, talking about uh, my girlfriend, Nicole, with do we want to choose a house or a motion capture lab? That is not, I'm not lying. Yeah. We literally, she was willing to give up a house. She's mm-hmm. willing to drive. She's willing to live in a one bedroom yeah. with me. Uh, she's willing to uh, drive in the same car. We have to ex- uh, coordinate schedules. The box so we car. can put, yeah. yeah. So we can, which is at 160,000 miles. I've driven it for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, we're, but that's her, mm-hmm. right? Willing to sacrifice those things for my dreams. Yeah. You guys. Uh, filming the podcast today, it's on a Thursday, which is yeah. on a lighter day for me in a very specific time frame. which mm-hmm. you were like, that's okay, we'll make it work. Yeah. Because the people around me in my life know what I want to do and they're on the ride too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's just, there's so much, it doesn't happen overnight. You look at these kids and they're like, um, You want it now. They want it now. They want to become that beast now. Yeah. You don't become that. It takes, and yes, yeah. that's the reality. To yeah. get there, it's hard. To go from a 2 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10 trying, it's really hard yeah. and it's really uncomfortable. And yes, you're not even close no. to being what you need to be. Which and can either be something that you can look at as a negative or something that you can be like, okay, this means I can get significantly better every single day. So we talked about the goal of mm-hmm. 100. Well, 98 is the next goal, right? Then 100. Well, the goal is just get better. Yeah. Yeah. The goal is be able to throw as hard as I can possibly throw yeah. without any sort of pain, no sort of neurological mm-hmm. inhibition of my body trying to avoid stress in different yeah. places. That's the a goal. true, a true healthy, a true yeah. healthy 100% intensity. Now, what do I think that'll be? I genuinely think that'll be somewhere in the 102 range yeah. or so. Um, sick. Yeah. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe it's 98. Yeah. Maybe it's 104. Maybe it's 106. Who knows what yeah. it'll be? The number doesn't matter. What does matter is that uh, I'm doing the work to get there, yeah. uh, trying to solve all the problems to be able to get there, uncovering new problems every day yeah. uh, to be able to go and attack those things, putting my money, effort, time where my mouth is. Yeah. Uh, and like, look, 
whatever it ends up being, it ends up being. Yep. That's reality. So that's the actual goal, is yeah. actually get healthy. But mm -hmm. I think if I said get healthy, I don't think people really realize the extent at of which what the it word means. healthy means. Yeah. yeah, and there's almost like the whole, like, there's layers to it. 100%. Um, but that's like getting, to, getting the time to both train with you and also train under you and mm -hmm. like learning has, was the best part of my career. And I think I appreciate that, that. that means we a lot. joke about it, but the whole like, I mean, there's only like, I played with a lot of guys and there's really only a handful that like, they make a debut, I'll fly to wherever it is. Sure. And so the whole, we'll already, we'll have signs. Yeah, yeah, We'll, we'll, yeah, have, yeah, a, yeah. we'll have our video. 100%. Um, and so I think that like, even for me, it's like the, what you're going for and having get, gotten to see it mm -hmm. um, is even more valuable than the whole like, whatever you end up getting to. Yeah. But, it's, um, I, but even, like that, I mean, yeah, being at an opening day would be Sure. Pretty, but I mean, dude, sweet. we've talked about this a lot, which is just like, look, if, if it's the first game back, I don't care where it is. Yeah. It's just like, I'm flying all the surgeons out, <laughs> all the people who had a big uh, point, like a, a yeah. big piece in this whole process, because I know what it feels like at the very beginning, I specifically remember I was in rookie ball and I was dominating. And I specifically told my girlfriend and my mom, I said, don't come out. Do not fly out because I'm dominating these guys. Yeah. And I'm not going to be here long. We're going up. Yeah. And then I got hurt and I haven't played for seven years. Yeah. And my girlfriend saw me pitch in person one time yeah. uh, in pro ball. One single time. Yeah. And I think my mom saw me maybe once or twice. And it's like... It sucks. Uh, and it's done forever, potentially. Yeah. Like... So that's a big deal. So yeah. really flipping the script on that because I had this weird um, thing at the time. It goes a little off base, but I think it's important to remember or to mention. I had this weird thing where it's like, oh, I'm out doing work. I don't want people to come and watch me. Like it's just a I regular need to day perform. at the office. Like, yeah, I need to go and perform. It's an intense environment. I don't want you guys to enjoy yeah. it. Whatever. So now I've realized that like, look, I can bring that mental intensity that I need to bring. I can make this a, a gladiator fight um, that I want it to be to yeah. get the most out of myself, but also allow other people to enjoy the yeah. ride and like that makes it better yeah you know? absolutely so. well that's like one i remember so i got hurt went back out to double a and we were in my wife and i flew well fiance at the time flew to uh some terrible place um some place in the texas league arkansas uh we went to arkansas we fly in we had to pay for the own hotel had to get a rental car because we were going to drive to tulsa for the next series and I remember I didn't pitch to like, or I pitched on like a Wednesday. Uh, I threw one inning, wasn't great. Mm -hmm. Just like super nervy, just like didn't feel great. Um, but I remember like after the game getting to um, like hug my fiance, take a photo and do like that. And I remember kind of getting bitched at for it. And I remember how much at that point I understood it enough to like not care yeah. at all. Yep. And it was like one of the coaches kind of did it. Mm -hmm. And I remember like if that was me in 2019, would have broke me. And at this point it was like, no. Like, yeah. I'm super grateful, and so the cool thing is, like, you get to bring all the people along who care for you. 100%. 100%. So, we talked about your career, mm -hmm. and this is, the goal for the podcast was, I, as a player, got to do a lot of podcasts for, like, other, other people, mm -hmm. and got to meet some cool people through that, and one of my goals with content in baseball is making sure that, like, there's so many good people in baseball, and, like, very interesting stories, um, so wanting to, like, share those, and obviously, I've known yours for a while, um, so... I appreciate getting to get to share that with everybody. Um, and the next section we have is a section that we call Caffeine, Chaos, and Culture. Okay. Um, so originally Caffeine and Chaos was, it was like we were in the AZL playing in like 110 degree days. Yeah. And it was me and two buddies we went out to breakfast at like a Waffle House or something. Okay. And we were pretty much sitting there about the concept of we're like, it would be funny to talk about all the weird stuff that happens in baseball. Yeah. And so that was like that, like those two lines have always stuck. So that was kind of a section that we've implemented. Um, but for this section, I will ask you 10 random questions that okay. you are unprepared for. Great. Uh, and that will range from baseball to non-baseball. Okay. And hopefully be um, entertaining as all well. Right, let's roll. Let's all do right. it. Yeah, 100%. All right. So the first question we have is a fan question. Okay. And it's actually a very good question. Okay. Not that the other questions were bad. The other questions weren't great, though. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the first question we have is, what does the quote, nobody is going to save you, mean to you? Ooh, it was by good. Drake, Drake Davis. Drake Davis. What a guy. Um, love that guy. So uh, nobody's going to save you um, is the idea that 
I think at the root of it, nobody really cares if you accomplish what you want to accomplish or not. Yeah. Because the people, let's say you want to um, throw harder, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're like, I want to throw harder. You go to somebody to help you throw harder. The reality is that person trains you to throw harder for money for yeah. their family to accomplish the lifestyle that they want to have. Yeah. So yes, I'm not saying that coaches aren't there for the right reasons. They're definitely mm -hmm. there for the right reasons. But ultimately, if you want something really, really bad, you're always going to want it more for yourself yes. than anybody else will want it for you. Uh, and that's what it means that nobody's going to come save you, yeah. is the idea that if you want this thing, no it's one's going to like, hey, man, why weren't you at training? Like, hey, man, you're not researching this that you said you were going to do. Yeah. You're not following up with this. You're not doing your diet. You said you wanted to learn this thing. And you're not yeah. like, no one's going to do that. No, because everybody's so focused on their own stuff. 100%. And I think it was like the, the when I would think of that quote, it always reminds me of, I would tell players is like, Nobody should ever care more about your career than you. Sure. It's your career. Nobody, yep. you go to a new school, he's got 40 pitchers. Yep. Pitching coach doesn't care more about your career than you. And if anybody ever cares more than about your career it's than you, problem. there's a problem. Yep. And that's all like getting to train with you. That was the closest it ever was, was like, you actually cared that much that we were both figuring things out. Yep. But like the majority of people, that's why like, I mean, I think that was a great question. Fantastic because question. It's like literally like, that is the advice like I'll tell players, like nobody should ever care more than you. Like even guys I train online, I tell them, my goal is for you to not at some point need me because you're going to have to go off to college. You're going to have to do another throwing program. But like my goal is for you to have a much better understanding of how to be a better pitcher. Yeah. And like, because I don't care more about your career than you should. Yeah. And if I do, we won't have success as a trainer. hundred percent. Yep. Second question, a very serious one. Would you rather throw 99 miles per hour okay. or a hundred miles an hour, but you have to get the 100 emoji tattooed on you? And wow. <laughs> Oh my god. So if you break 100, you have yeah. to get the emoji tattoo. And it has to be the red font, ugly 100 emoji. Oh man. Honestly, dude, I'm going to take 99. I'm going to take Damn. 99. For sure. 99 you for could put sure. the 100 on like the nope. back of the neck nope. like the logo? No, 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 no. I couldn't do it. Damn. I couldn't do it. I would just I would just oh <laughs> You could just coast at 99. Uh, that would be so <laughs> bad. That would be so bad. I'm going 99 no tattoo for sure. Just can you imagine like wearing that tattoo around <laughs> all the time because it has to be visible like there's oh, no it like... would, well that's what if you said yes the qu it was gonna have to be visible yeah in shorts, uh -huh. like uh, yeah that's that's you not fair it, if like, it's like oh it's, on, or something. it's yeah. on my thigh really high up it's like that's not fair yeah um honestly you gotta dude, do the I'm full going... chapman 105 with the baseball and flames yeah, dude, okay. honestly i'm going i'm going 99 the... <laughs> no tattoo damn yeah. Yeah. yeah fair enough um favorite or least favorite part of today's baseball culture favorite part of today's baseball culture is the idea that someone really, really good doesn't mm. always have to be that top round draft pick. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, so it's not just today's baseball culture. I think it's just my favorite part mm -hmm. of baseball culture is like that you can find really, really great, impactful people and players from all different. Yeah. It's not just the guy that's the head horse at the beginning. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. I love that idea. Um, now, it doesn't mean, I think a lot of people take that too far, where they're like, yeah, I'm a bench player. Uh, but I can still do but it. But I can still, it's like, like okay, you ah. still have to be realistic. <laughs> and I'm and I'm not going to work hard or do anything, yeah. but like, but I can still be the best player. I'm yeah. It's like, okay, be realistic. But um, I do like the idea uh, that uh, there's just like more of a chance yeah. for, for other guys. you know. And also, I think now people don't get missed. If you throw 100, you sure. don't get missed. It doesn't matter if you're in a small town. Sure, sure. Um, so and then I, with I, the, the cool part, too, is it's different than other sports. Um, throwing hard, being able to hit the ball far, all those tools matter a lot. Yeah. But it is important. You can't ignore the fact that guys like Kyle Hendricks are in the big leagues. Yep. You can't ignore the fact that Zach Ranke's in the big leagues. You yeah. can't ignore the fact that and these still guys... And well. Very yeah. well. Yeah, you can't ignore the fact that these guys that throw velocities that hundreds of thousands of people across the U.S. can throw, uh, they can compete at the highest level. Yeah. So I think that is really cool. Um, just the idea that it's more accessible, I think, than other sports. Yes, I would agree with that. Um... What is your go-to move if a hitter charges the mound while you're? Oh pitching? my go-to move! The hitter charges the mound. Um, I think Which I'd I feel be like would be very worried. few hitters. <laughs> I'd be worried because if someone's charging the mound on me, I would they're assume probably they're bigger big than me. <laughs> I would assume they're much. Which bigger would be an, which could be an issue. Which yeah. is going to be a problem, dude. Because if this guy, I'm six seven two forty right now. So if somebody's so if someone's to charge charging the mound, the mound, it's a bad day. It's like they're like six nine two sixty. <laughs> so like, I'm. No one's coming to save me. No, like, no, nobody else wants yeah, to get the in first that fight. Like I'm good. They're like you guys you know, go you do got it. it. You got it. 
Um, I think the go-to move, I, I think the only move is you have to stay there and wear it. Like, yeah. the first thing that comes to mind is the uh, the Zach Granke. What was it, Carlos Quinn? Carlos Quinton? Quinn broke yeah, his Yeah, where shoulder. he's just like, okay, <laughs> throws uh, the glove and just wears it. Uh, I think I think that's the only move that you're allowed to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know who the pitcher was, and maybe this is uh, Why? <laughs> maybe this is the the reason. But I I remember there's this one video in my head of a pitcher like running away, yeah. and he's like dodging the guy and dodging him. But I remember that Zach Granke threw his glove down. Got and was like, we're going. Yeah. yeah, with with Carlos Quentin. Now, obviously, he had he had to wear the injury of that. Yeah. Um, Ideally, you don't get injured doing it, but yeah. I do think you have. I to think like... that's my move. I think Fair that's enough. my move. Is I'm holding my ground. You want to come out here and you want to make this go. Yeah. Like, if you're going to come all the way out here, the I'm least gonna, I can do is, like, meet you. <laughs> meet you when you're here, you know? I don't think I'm charging at him. I think I'm letting him, like, yeah. come on in, let's go. It would have to be, um, like, a judge or a stand size guy. To, for yeah, him to, yeah, yeah, yeah. But even still... If a really but, small dude comes out, then, I mean, good. maybe that's good for you. It's good for him. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Like, but, and I think there's a, another thing that would run through my head really quickly would be, like, if I charge at him, which I think would be a respectful move, mm-hmm. if he's coming at me... Then I'm like, sure, why not? And then run at him. I think that's respectful. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm definitely getting fined way more and suspended yeah. for way longer. Yeah. That so is. I think if I hold my ground, I think it's a really easy, just like, look, man, I, I, I was, was just off. on he the mound. He came at me. You know. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going with. I don't that's know. Well, maybe we yeah. find out, but yeah. I don't know. It's easy to talk. I, I don't right? think we'll find out. If I'm being honest. <laughs> All right. What is the biggest animal you could take in a fight? No weapons. No, this is ridiculous. This question. That, and it has dude. to be like a. It has to be like a primal animal. Like a primal animal. Yeah, you're wearing a gorilla. The shirt. biggest you're animal. A gorilla. No, of course not. <laughs> We've had this conversation before, and these people like say gorilla. Drastically like, overestimate. It's like, what bro, they... a gorilla can rip you in half. Yeah. That's the. That's the most ridiculous. I wouldn't thing. say gorilla. I'd probably no. say like a deer or something. I could take a deer. Oh, I, I sure hope so. I, like I don't a, know if I could catch it. Dude, like a male deer? Nah, this like is, a small deer. I, I honestly think the biggest primal animal that I have a chance at in a fight, like some sort of percentage chance, I think would be like a coyote or maybe like a smaller wolf. Just got to catch a kick. Like, because like I've got a chance. Yeah. I'm not saying I win. I'm saying in a hundred worlds, yeah. I don't die at least once. <laughs> like, I think that's a, <laughs> does that make sense? Fair but enough. I, but I'm going like, I think I got a coyote. Uh, because uh, we live in Arizona, they're pretty small. Yeah, you know, um, and uh, you just gotta not get bit. The wolf, <laughs> dude. I'm worried about the wolf because that thing's <laughs> gonna be big. I think people drastically overestimate the animal that they could take. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's a it's a small. That's dog why it's a good size. question because I know at some point somebody's gonna say, "Oh, a gorilla." <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna say, <laughs> "We're like, gonna rewind lion. the tape and say just six like, foot seven, two forty said, not a gorilla." Yeah, yeah. I'm going. I'm going coyote or small wolf. That's cool. what I'm going. That's a good one. All right. Favorite baseball glove company. Oh. I'm trying to get connected with baseball glove companies. Okay. And potentially, if you have a favorite glove company and they watch this video, mm-hmm. then they could give you a glove. See, here's the thing is I, I don't, don't, don't have want to... one. Oh, you don't have no, one? No, I don't, I don't have a face, uh, favorite baseball glove company. Oh. So that means I'm on it's the market. It's free range. And available for a favorite baseball glove company. Um, yeah, I've, I've tried a handful out. Um, the thing about me when I was younger was I tried to spend as little money as possible, yeah. which was one of the big reasons that I didn't end up getting a coach was because I thought yep. they were so expensive. Uh, and I've obviously reversed on that quite a bit, yeah. given the stuff we talked about before. Um, but with that, um, I always had budget gloves. I never had, I never stuck with a certain company. I never really had anything nice. Yeah. So um, nice that's just how it was. This so I haven't really time. experienced a nice glove. Yeah. I haven't experienced uh, stuff like that. So I'm open. I don't have enough experience. I'm open. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a get a few gloves. Hit me up. Yeah. Hit me up with the DMs. <laughs> uh, next question we have is least favorite question you get asked as a trainer. The reason I put this one in is so anybody who watches this video can avoid this question or questions like it. No, see, you okay. know how social media works is it's the only question I'm going to get asked once I say that this is my least favorite. Um, my least favorite, um, it's not a specific question, it's a group of questions. Yeah. And it's when I do my best to put really good, actionable information mm-hmm. out there for kids. And um, 
and not just for kids, for anybody who wants to learn and get better, because I really like all this information getting out there. Yeah. But the problem with that, you've read the book, If You Give a Moose a Muffin, right? Yeah. Is you, then he wants some jam to go with yeah. it. So then I get these DMs that these kids are just like, hey, my elbow hurts. Can you tell me what to do? And it's like, no, go no. see a PT. Yeah. And then they get mad at me for telling them, well, not you, answering the you, question. why aren't you answering the question? It's like, because it's complicated. I At the time that we're filming this, 35,000 people follow me on uh, Instagram alone it's yeah. like I get 20 DMs a day if I spend four minutes on every person it's an hour and a half it's just yeah. like of every single well, day. it's like you I train. just You're, if you actually want the question answered yeah and like, if it's the guys you're training 100% yeah. and that's another thing uh, that I think is really important is if this question is actually valuable to you, mm-hmm. you will sacrifice things in your life to get it answered. To figure out how to find 100%. it. hundred yeah. percent. So if that means you have to go get a job to then pay for somebody to mm-hmm. then go answer the question, then do it. Like the, the reality, this is honestly insane to me. When you get older, you realize uh, how crazy some things are. You can with no skills whatsoever, Go and get a job at Chipotle. They will give you free food, yeah. a lot of free food, and they will you pay you money yeah. to just make other people's food and just like be a nice person all day. Yeah. And then you can take that money and you can do whatever you want with it, which includes paying people to answer who have your spent actual their entire <laughs> life researching this thing that like they are on fire for whatever yeah. it is that you want to know. You can take that money from having no skills whatsoever while you're eating your free food that you got from Chipotle from working yep. there and then pay them for their expertise and then you learn. And guess what? When you learn, you become more valuable. And yep. maybe one day you won't work at Chipotle because you'll be so valuable that then you can get a job making doing more money else, doing yeah. other things. And guess what? Now you have more money to spend on people to learn more things yep. and it just exponentially. So, um, that's the biggest thing is it's just like people who come to me with questions and they don't realize the severity and the difficulty and how in depth you have to go to answer that yeah. question. And they're like, Oh, well it's easy for you. Yeah. You can just answer it. And it's like, okay, no, you have, <laughs> if you want your question answered, yeah. you got to put in work to get your question answered. Yep. So that's, that's the one for me. So DM Dean Chipotle. If you start working at Chipotle, bro, seriously, I'm not kidding. Like I literally, I worked at Chipotle. You know this. I worked at Chipotle for a long time and it was awesome. I literally recommend it. Uh, people hit me up all the time. Like, Hey, I'm coming to Arizona to train with you. Um, like I'm literally not kidding. I do this all the time. Uh, and then, uh, they're like, what should I do for job? Do you have any work or whatever? And I'm like, Oh bro, just work at Chipotle. Yeah. You get it. It's better than DoorDash. Don't do DoorDash. Dude, every shift that you work, you get a free, uh, Chipotle meal. And they're like, a free meal? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> dude. Every shift, every it's day. It's great. Dude, yeah. So just do that. 100%. That's a great one. Well, that is it for today's episode. I really appreciate you coming on and Absolutely. getting to talk. And, Absolutely. Um, for everybody who, if you are not following Dean already, which I'm assuming 90% of my audience is, um, you can find him on social media very easily at... Double X Can Flex. So spell that double X Can Flex. That's Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, yep. YouTube. All of it, same one. You'll see them there. So I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be coming back with some more episodes.